I've got just over 24 hours to pack for a $1 million plus budget travel shoot. It's a huge job and I'm really excited for it, but the problem is time. And as you can see from the state of my desk, I'm surrounded by gear at the moment. Now normally I would never wait until the last minute like this, especially for such a high stakes project, but that means it's a perfect opportunity to show you what this process looks like for me because we're gonna have to move so fast that you're gonna get the realest version possible. Plus this is not a typical gig and it has some pretty unusual requirements. So I'm gonna have to think really carefully about what I bring and how I pack. Anyways, we don't have a lot of time to waste and it's a full five-step process, so let's get into it. Okay, so here's what's happening. Right now, it's Saturday evening and we leave for the airport at 4 a.m. on Monday morning. So when you account for the fact that I need to sleep, that means just over 24 hours to fully pack and be ready for an insanely high budget job. Even though it might seem like I just sit here and make YouTube videos, I'm actually a working DP and right now things are hectic. Okay, so I can't say much about the job right now, but the rough details are that it's a three week travel job overseas with the central character continuously moving. Like we're never staying in the same place for multiple nights in a row once we roll, and that's gonna seriously influence the decisions we make about what to bring with us. So my basic process always looks about the same before every job. It's nothing crazy, but it works great. It's just five basic steps that help me make sure I'm bringing the right tools for the job and that I don't leave anything important behind. And since I've also decided to make it even harder on myself by making a YouTube video about it as I do it, I really do need to get moving here. So let's get upstairs. Have you ever heard someone say, if you gave me an hour to chop down a tree, I'd spend the first 45 minutes sharpening the ax? Well, filmmaking is pretty much the same. The first step here is to think. Really just sit there and make a list and think about all the situations you're likely to run into. Now we've already had some pre-production Zoom meetings before this, so it's not like I'm coming in totally blind and I already know the important details about the job and what they're hoping to capture. So I'll just sit down for as long as I can with the deck on my laptop and then a notebook in my other hand or on the desk and then I'll just start making lists. There's no rules to these lists, but I'll just try and match shots and visual references from the deck to the gear I know I'll need to make it possible. Like, I can clearly see that since we're moving around a lot, I'm gonna need to track vehicles, so a drone is gonna be essential. But would a couple GoPros with suction cup mounts also be helpful? What about a full-on car rig for the FX3? What lights do I have that'll be the most versatile in a moving environment like that? However long you spend on this is gonna be time well invested, so if the job coming up is important and you don't wanna mess it up, take some time before you start just shoving stuff in a bag. Okay, so now that I have a pretty good idea of what I'm gonna need, the next step is to actually bring it all together in one place. For me, that's a little more complicated because I have a ton of gear and I live in a really small apartment, so I have to keep the bigger stuff off-site in a storage locker, which is where we are now. Honestly, this is about the dingiest facility I could possibly imagine, but it's close, it's affordable, and it's been around forever without burning down, so here we are. And it's kind of an important thing to keep in mind as your filmmaking business grows and you start to do bigger and bigger projects. What are you gonna do with all the gear? If you're lucky enough to live somewhere in middle America with a massive two-car garage or something, then that's great for you. But for all my non-rich urban friends out there, only buy stuff you need because the struggle is real here. So I'm gonna rummage around here as quickly as possible, pull out the stuff I need, like the vehicle mounting kit and the easy rig, and then get it all back home so we can get this process moving. Okay, so now that I've pulled everything I need from the storage locker, I'm gonna get all the rest of the stuff I need from the shelves here and out of my office, and then we're gonna go upstairs and start laying everything out on the floor so I can really get a sense of how much there is, but also what I really need and what I could leave behind. There's nothing special going on here, but for me, it's really important just to have all the gear laid out to look at. I'll kind of roughly divide everything into categories. So like an area for cameras, an area for lighting, another for audio, and then just sort of stare at it all for a while. It might sound a little strange, but as I look at these things in groupings, I'll just start to think and get lots of little ideas for stuff that I'm missing. And also things that I might not actually need that I can take out. Typically, I'll spend a couple hours at this stage just running back and forth from my gear your room, adding or getting rid of stuff until I'm feeling mostly good that I have the right stuff for the job.
All right, so now that I've got everything sort of divvied up into piles, I know it looks really chaotic, but in my mind, it's pretty clearly organized into camera, audio, lighting, and camera accessories. So it all makes sense to me. But like I said, this is a pretty unusual job. Um, and this is actually a very minimal setup by my standards. A couple reasons, like I said, we're moving around so much, we gotta be very selective with what we bring, but also there are no interviews on this job, which means no key light, we can leave a ton of grip gear, we don't need boom poles, uh, way less stuff in general. So that's kind of good news. Maybe to you, this looks like a lot, but for me, this is way less than I would normally bring. So I don't want this video to balloon out of control, so I'm gonna try and move this really quickly, but I'll go through everything that is most likely getting packed and a couple of reasons why I'm bringing it with me. So starting with cameras, no surprises here, I'm bringing both of the ones I have. The FX9 will be my A cam. The FX3 we're shooting on right now, that'll be the B cam for this whole thing. And then we'll have an FX6 as a supplemental camera if we need it, and maybe for some of the verite scenes. Uh, Lens-wise, we have a 50 millimeter prime, a 24 mil prime, a 16 to 35 for gimbal and vehicle mounting purposes, and then general purpose lenses are the Fujinon 18 to 55 and 50 to 135. Great combination. We also have a Sony 70 to 200 that is packed in Hank's hotel room right now. So that'll be coming with us as well and it'll be our longest lens. After that, you've got batteries here. I'm bringing six V-mount batteries and five Sony batteries, which should be enough. The two extra V-mounts are really just a backup. I rarely use more than four. Uh, always bring the stock monitor, even if you replace the monitor on your big cameras, because you never know what happens with the cabling here, and without a monitor, there's nothing you can do. There's also a guy in the background running a uh, weed whacker or something, so that's cool, but we're really on a time crunch, so we're just gonna keep rolling through it, I'm sorry. GoPro accessories. We will be using two GoPro Hero 9s on this shoot. They work great. I don't see any need to get new ones. I use them sort of so infrequently. Uh, but I'll go through this bag of accessories and take a lot of them out. I, here I have, you know, head mounts and chest mounts and wrist, wrist mounts. All we really need are suction cups because we're doing, this is gonna be a vehicle heavy show. Yeah, I'll go through this. I won't bring all of these. But two GoPros plus batteries. Uh, that's pretty much it for the cameras, memory cards for everything. Moving on to audio, um, also because there's no interviews, pretty minimal kit, um, but we are maybe gonna have a couple of characters. So I've got four Sankin COS 11D mics, uh, plus a timecode jamming cable. And then in terms of the audio itself, I have one set of Sennheiser G3s, super old, still work great. Uh, those will be our in-camera labs. Then I will use two tentacle sync E's or track E's, track E's for the additional character mics. These are great. These are internally recording and then we'll jam everything together using tentacle timecode boxes. So I'll put one on the FX9, one on the FX3, and then the cameras will be running in unison. Both cameras will have top mics, uh, a Sennheiser 416 on the A cam and a Sennheiser MK600, I think it's called, on the B cam. So decent little mics. All right, moving on for lighting. I've got two possibilities here, and I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. I've got the Aperture MC Pro 8 light kit. This is really cool. There's eight of these really powerful uh, RGB lights in here. They all charge together in one case. You just plug it into the side. And honestly, for a job like this where we're moving all the time and we're gonna be in vehicles and there are no interviews, I think I'm okay with just these lights. Awesome, Weed Whacker stopped. It does make me a little bit nervous to only have these tiny lights. They've told me a million times there's no interviews. So I'm considering bringing these two two-foot uh, Aperture Infinibars. These are extremely useful, also very magnetic. Like the magnets on these are crazy strong, but we also may not need them. And the name of the game here is bringing only the essential. So I'm gonna pack everything else first, and then if these fit comfortably, then they'll come with us. Otherwise, I'm gonna leave them behind. And I think this eight light kit is gonna be enough to handle everything we need. The next really important piece of kit here is this vehicle mounting kit. This is the iFootage Spider Crab. For Hollywood standards, 
This might not be the craziest mount, but for what I do, run and gun stuff, this thing is fantastic. It's basically just four really heavy duty uh, suction cups that can hold up to like 60 pounds, I think. It's got an incredible weight capacity. And then these very burly arms that uh, all fit together to mount anything up to an Alexa even. You can mount a 66 pound camera using this. I'm gonna use it with the FX3 though, so it should be more than enough. And because this is a very movement focused show, I think this is gonna be huge. We can also use these cups independently with GoPros and just basically get cameras all over the place and really turn the movement into a feature of the show rather than a hindrance. So love this kit, really reasonably priced and extremely handy. So that is definitely coming. And speaking of movement, we have a drone of course. Obviously a stop swag for everything. Uh, this is the Mavic Air 3. Not the fanciest drone, pretty mid-range, but I really, really like it. Mainly because with this f-stop pouch, I can carry this whole drone plus three batteries in the top of my backpack. It's really lightweight. And for me, it's better than getting the ultimate uh, lens resolution right now anyways. All right, moving on. There's a ton of little things here. I'm not gonna go into everything, but We've got these two pouches. One of these is all-purpose power. There's a power strip in here, an adapter, a couple of fast chargers, an extension cord, uh, everything you'd need to run electricity. And then here we have a bag of disassembled Motorola radios. Really handy, especially when people are traveling long distances in vehicles. We need people to stop and start calling people cell service. These are just really handy. You buy once and they just really never break. Uh, what else? We have a gimbal. I talk so much smack on gimbals, uh, but the reality is I actually use this thing a lot. It's been on a ton of shoots with me. Uh, as you can see from the state of the case, I actually really, really love how beat up this case is. If you can see that mud and the zippers don't work, it's, you know, I turned it into an outdoor cat and I really love that it fell apart. It makes me joyous every time I feel silly for using it. But yeah, I'm just kidding. Great, great tool, really handy. Uh, this comes with me on most shoots and I always find some way to use it. So I make fun of gimbals a lot, but it's still coming. Okay, moving on, more tools. An AC pouch, always, always critical. It has a blower in it, a full set of Allen keys, uh, multi-tool Leatherman. Uh, screwdriver attachments, everything you need to keep the camera clean and running. Really handy, gotta have it. Moving around, we have the tripods. Flowtech, I'm always talking about it. I have two heads. Uh, the Active 8 head that I have is a lot nicer to use and a lot burlier, but this FSB 10 is still great. It's just much lighter, so I'm bringing that over the active system, even if it's marginally less convenient. B-cam tripod is gonna be this uh, fall cam tree root. Again, this is one of those pieces of gear I never really expected to like. I thought it was gonna be a piece of junk and it's actually really cool. I like it a lot. Okay, we're almost done. Last thing, and this is something that we're not 100% sure on is the Easy Rig. Uh, this is a big maybe. It might be handy because even though we're moving around a lot at each of the big destinations, we're gonna get out and do a bunch of Verite coverage. Uh, I can't really say exactly what we're gonna cover, but pretty cool events every time we stop. And there'll be, you know, four to five hour shoulder mounted sessions. So this could be really useful, but I'm just, it's really a size thing at this point. So we're gonna get everything into the bags and I'm gonna see if this fits, I will probably bring it. And then lastly, for a quick and dirty director's monitor, I have this Hollyland system. So this is just the transmitter attachment. This is the Mars 4K. They have a newer, even better one now, but this one's great. Uh, this just Velcros onto the back of my V-mount batteries. And then I put an iPad in this rugged, pretty cheap case I just bought off Amazon. And then it becomes a director's monitor. So if you're shooting something and it's the first time working with new clients and you want them to be happy and feel secure and have everyone be on the same page, you just give them this and this will beam them a camera signal and then there's no surprises. I really like this thing. And I forgot, obviously, a computer. Uh, I won't pull this up. It's a 16 inch MacBook Pro, couple sets of card readers and 
hard drives are gonna be provided on location. All right, so this is starting to look pretty good. We have to see how it all starts to fit in the bags, but before we start shoving stuff into packs, there's one more step. So let's head back down to the gear dungeon for a second, and I'll show you what's next. All right, so now that we've got the pile whittled down to the essentials, it's time to charge everything up. Now it's pretty likely that we're gonna have to hit the ground and start shooting on this one, so we just wanna be sure that everything's fully charged and ready to go for a day of shooting. Even if the schedule doesn't call for it, it's just a good habit to get into because you never know what's gonna happen when you land, and when you need your gear to work, it's already kinda too late. Again, there's nothing crazy happening here, but anything and everything that can hold a charge is getting plugged in and topped up. Side note, if you travel with gear, make sure you always bring at least one power bar of your own and any adapters you might need to plug it in because ideally you're going to want to be able to plug in everything you have all at once at the end of the day. The more you have to wait and switch things out, the more chances there are of you making mistakes and the less sleep you'll get. All right, now it's getting late, so we're just going to leave all this stuff to charge overnight and in the morning we'll jump back in. All right, it's the next morning and everything's had a chance to fully charge up. I double checked and there were no battery issues, so that's great. But now it's time to go through some of the really important stuff and also the more finicky stuff like the gimbals and the drones and go through it piece by piece and make sure it all actually works. It's actually kind of incredible when you're working with electronics, at least for me, how often stuff can just stop working for no reason. And I want to know that right now, not when we land. I don't know, is anyone else packed up a perfectly functioning drone or something like that after a shoot and then left it on the shelf for a couple of weeks and then opened it back up for your next shoot to some sort of inexplicable error message. I mean, I hope not, but it's definitely happened to me before. And when you're working on a project with this sort of money and expectations behind it, this just can't happen if you want to get called back. Because even though we're not really bringing all that much stuff with us, the gear that is coming is all 100% critical. So there's just no room for nasty surprises. And that means testing. So I'm not going to bore you and try every single battery and cable here, but I will spend an hour or so making sure that the really important stuff is good to go. Key things that I need to be sure of on this one are the drone, so I'll just set it up quickly and get it into a low hover, maybe test out the camera and record a simple clip or two. The gimbal is also a notoriously finicky tool, so I wanna make sure that one's good to go. Then I'll move on to the GoPros and the audio gear. I'll also take a minute to get all the lights connected to Sidus Link and make sure they're all ready to be used as a unit before I build up the A cam and B cam fully and make sure everything is good, especially the monitor and power cables. There's nothing worse than getting to a location and realizing you can't get your camera monitor working right and then you have to shoot a massive project using just the tiny stock monitor. It's happened to me and it sucks. All right, so you don't need to watch me build every piece of gear here, but we check the really uh, error prone stuff and it's all good. And once I'm sure there's no issues, it's time to go back inside and actually pack, which is probably my favorite part of the whole process. And it means we're getting close to done, which is a very good thing because the day is going by really quickly and I still have to pack all my personal gear and hopefully get some sleep before we roll out at 4 a.m. So let's go back inside and start getting things into bags. Since this is already gonna be a monster video and we've already gone over most of the stuff that's coming, I'm not gonna show you me packing everything piece by piece. It's just gonna be way too long of a video, but I do wanna talk quickly about a few fundamental ideas here. The first is that for every shoot involving travel, you're gonna want some sort of bag system that lets you bring everything you need to get your cameras up and running on the plane with you. So like if all the check bags get lost, you need to be able to get going with a minimal setup, even if it's not ideal. So that means carrying on the cameras, batteries, mics, monitors, all the cables and all the other stuff that you need so that no matter what, you're good to go when you land. Now, I personally use all f-stop stuff for this. No surprises there if you've been watching the channel for a while, but I do really think that their modular system makes this easy. So my main shooting pack is this Tilopa 50 liter, which I've said multiple times is my favorite camera pack in the world, but it's just slightly too big to carry on. Actually, let me just take a minute or two to fanboy here because I just got the brand new version of this pack with the Dura Diamond fabric and it's just so nicely made that I'm pretty excited to get it out in the field to be honest. I mean the old version of this bag I had for five-ish or more years and it still works amazingly so I think this one's gonna hold up for a really long time. But it is just a touch too big for most airlines so I usually take everything out of it and pack it down flat and then take the ICU with a shoulder strap and carry that as a personal item. Then when I land I'll get the bag back out 
take the ICU, put it in, and then I'll add the drone and whatever else I need to carry and I'm good to go. This is empty right now, but it's where all the lenses and the audio gear and some of the batteries will go. Then the cameras themselves go into a smaller pack, which is this also F-stop. This is the Lotus four core and it takes the medium sized ICU, but it's only 32 liters instead of 50 liters. So it's a lot easier to get in and I'm able to fit both the FX9 and the FX3 in here along with some personal stuff like my laptop, some headphones and a book. And it's big enough to hold it all without making the gate check agents suspicious. Then when we get there, all the camera stuff comes out of this bag and this gets turned into a secondary shooting bag for whatever accessories or lenses that we don't need on my back all the time, but we want to have close on hand. So with this bag on my back and then the ICU on my shoulder as a personal item, it's everything I need to get up and running. And so far it's the best travel system I've found for what I need. Now let's actually put all the stuff in the bags and finish this up. Then it's really just a matter of getting the gear to fit the bags I have. And I have way too many bags from Pelicans to duffels and huge rollers. So there's lots to choose from. But like I said, there are a few factors to consider here when picking bags. The first is to make them low profile because we're gonna be constantly moving this stuff around and in a bunch of different cities and neighborhoods. So I'd kind of prefer if it didn't scream expensive film equipment. That means I'd probably leave the Pelicans behind because they're kind of the most filmmaker looking things ever. And instead I'm gonna try and pack into nondescript duffels and rollers instead. Also, I wanna try and use as few bags as possible so that we can get from our vehicle to our hotel room and as few trips as possible when we're unpacking late at night. But more than that, when the shoot wraps, I'll be traveling home without my assistant this time, so I need to be able to physically move through the airport alone. And that means ideally getting everything into four bags maximum. So minimal, non-flashy is the name of the game here. And other than that, it's just about getting it all to fit. And hopefully after a couple of hours of tetrisizing things in different ways, I'll be left with four perfectly packed check bags. All right, through the magic of editing, we got all that stuff into these four bags just about perfectly in a couple of seconds or however long it took but it's getting late and we needed to get it done. I still have to pack up all my clothes still, but that shouldn't take too much longer. Then I'll have a few hours to chill and get to bed as early as possible because it's gonna be a really early start tomorrow. Now, I definitely would not recommend waiting to the last possible minute to pack for a big job like this. And under normal circumstances, I would have liked to spend way more time here, but sometimes you just get busy and you gotta deal with things as they are. So here we go. So if you're still watching at this point, you're obviously a giant gear nerd just like me. And I hope that video was helpful or at least entertaining to watch me go through the whole process and I'll let you know how it all went when I get back. See ya. Sweet.